So we're good at reading a room, right? We can walk in the room and read it and read people. So we sit back if they're jumping on us or like confronting us or we're having to deal with something because of our drinking or our using, we can get real good at sitting there going, what do you need me to say? Okay, you need to hear this, you need, oh, okay, yeah, you're right, I do. Yeah, so it's agreeing with them and it's a way of backing them off, right? And then you go, ah, oh, are they gone? And as soon as they're gone, you know, this happens with kids who grow up in a home where they're taught by their parents it's my way or the highway and the parents don't ever let them negotiate for things. The parents are just like, I don't care what you want. You're not doing anything you want. And so, or the punishment's really harsh or something like that, is that they sit there and go, yeah, 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 mom. Yeah, dad, I'll do whatever you say. Are they gone? Good, let's go party, right? Go do whatever I want now. Let's hope we don't get caught. All right, that's compliance. In that, you know, like, remember the last week, the only guy that I, know, that I ever saw that didn't do that was that guy who lit up the joint in front of Fran down at the court, right? What's that? Did they tell you, he tell you that? Yeah, last week. Yeah, 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 that guy who lit up a joint in court and said, Your Honor, I had a dream that somebody else in a robe with a higher authority than you told me I could smoke pot. So it's, I'm going to smoke pot, and he lit it up. Took a big hit. Yeah, it took a big hit and said, you want to hit, Your Honor? <laughs> right? You know, they, so they, and then they chased him around the courtroom while he was hitting that thing till they took it, you know, because he was going to get as much as he could before he left and stuff. So, you know, he didn't do compliance anymore. And I, like I said last week, he's either the craziest person I know or he has the most integrity of anybody, any man that I ever knew. Because he just said, I'm going to stand up for what I believe in. And I'll be in your face about it. And I'm going to act out, and I'm just going to take with the consequences. And Because I, I told, he told me he was going to do it the day before, that he was going to tell the judge. I didn't know he was going to bring a joint. <laughs> I really didn't know he was going to bring a joint and light it up. He just told me he was going to tell Fran. I said, you might want to rethink that. And he said, no. <laughs> Let her do what she's going to do. I don't even care. He walked out of my office like, oh, yeah, he's either crazy or whatever, okay? Okay, disagreeing is arguing just to argue. These are people, you ever met anybody that like when you start having an argument with them, you know you're right, but then by the end of it, you kind of go, well, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I mean, there are some people that are really slick like that, you know what I mean, that are really, really good at that. And you can go, uh, uh, you know, abusive partners can be like that. You can start out fighting and then wind up apologizing afterwards, where you go, well, what, 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 wait a minute. They walk away and they go, I was right. Okay, so, and that's, some people just love, they can, they can get you debating and arguing. It throws you, they throw you off what the real issue there is. Okay, so that's, that's another defense. Um, minimizing, this is, um, in AA they call it comparing yourself out in 12-step programs. It's when you come in and go, well, I haven't done that yet, right? I haven't been homeless. I've never been in front of the judge. I didn't lose my house. I didn't lose my wife. I didn't lose my kids. I didn't, you know, I don't have, I don't have, you know, and it's also when like people say, you know what, if I get to this point, if I ever do this, then I know I have a problem. Then you get there and you go, well, if that, that's not so bad. If I ever did this, okay. You know, I used to say, if I ever hung around my, my meth dealer's house, then I'd know I have a problem. Because those people stay up for a week. <laughs> and they're all psychotic by the end of the week because they got all that dopamine floating around in their brain, right? Because they just don't go to bed and they just keep hitting that, you know, and, and they're just like lack of sleep and crazy. You know, they'd be saying things to me like, Chris, do you hear the birds? It's nighttime. The birds don't come out at night. You know, I know that the FBI are out there and they're whatever, uh, you know. And I'm going, y'all are some scary people, man. Can I just get my stuff and go? <laughs> but by the end of it, I was hanging around him. And I was like, well, you know, if I ever got those sores, you know, if, if my gums ever started bleeding, you know, if I ever got, you, know, you ever seen people like on, they get all those sores, you know, like meth freaks, you know, that like get their hair falls out, their teeth get all nasty, and they get all, if that ever happened, you know, get to these points or whatever. If I ever went to jail, if I ever, if anything like that ever happened, okay. Um, 
uh, maximizing, that's, it's, that's the same thing as what they call catastrophizing. That's just like, oh, well, what the, it's, it's where you like just blow everything out of proportion just to give yourself a reason to go out. See, can't get any worse than this. Oh, yeah, what's the point of even trying? This is so crappy, this is so bad, or I can't believe this, so you just blow up. And, you know, my sponsor used to call it pole vaulting over mouse turds, okay? If you're really overreacting to situations like that, you know that in getting big, you, you might be giving yourself a reason to go out and use, okay? Like, it's when you start looking at what's wrong with everything around you like, when you start getting that itch, that was me after two weeks in the halfway house. I would start getting really bad post-acute withdrawal and getting that, like, you know, that brain itch where you're just like, oh, I want to get high. And then I would start finding what was wrong with everybody and everything at the house. And the last place I was at, my sponsor told me, he said, you know what I want you to do every day for the next however long that you're at that halfway house, Chris? And I said, what? And he said, I want you to find one thing that you're grateful about the halfway house and tell the people who run it every day. Thank you for running this halfway house. This is what I'm grateful for about being here today. And I looked at him and I went, are you kidding me? Do what? They, I, am, I don't like anything about this house. <laughs> I mean, seriously. He said, do they, you know what he said to me? He goes, do they have toilet paper? And I went, yeah. He goes, is that better than wiping your ass with your hand? I said, yeah. He goes, thank him for the toilet paper. And I said, you mean I have to do this? He goes, if you don't do it, I will not work with you. I will not be your sponsor. Because your focus, whatever you focus on, becomes a habit. Whether it's in a relationship with a person, if all you start looking at what's wrong, that's all you're going to see, right? So we have to start shifting your focus because, Chris, this is your disease talking to you. Your disease is trying to find things wrong so that you can have a reason to go out and use. It's, this is your disease trying to protect itself right now. And I said, oh my God, you know, I really, I was so hated the halfway house. The last one I was at, you know, that I was just like, and it was a great place. It was, there's nothing wrong with it. But I was not in that space to have gratitude in my heart. And I remember going up to the, the lady that ran, and her, it was a husband and wife team too that ran that place. And I went, up, I went up to Denise and I said, Denise, I just want to tell you all that I'm really grateful that we got toilet paper here. And she was like, what? I said, just trust me. I'm just grateful that we, we got toilet paper here. She goes, okay, whatever, you know. And that is all I could come up with for a week. And then I thought, you know, I want to tell her something different than this. So I started trying to find other things, you know. And uh, so we had a dog there that I really liked. Really nice dog. Little lab and everything like that. It was a rescue lab, too. Like most of us were rescued off the street, too, right? So she was um, the sweetest dog in the world. And I said, I'm just really grateful that we have Daisy here. It was Daisy was her name. So I'm just grateful we have Daisy in the house. Because sometimes Daisy is the only thing in this world that, like, is happy to see me when I come home. You know, and she'd go, yeah, we like Daisy too, you know, and then it, it got started getting easier, okay? So, I mean, if you think about it, if you had to, like, find one thing that you were grateful for and had to tell Barb or Lonnie today, I mean, how much of a challenge would that be on some days? It's not easy, you know? So, that's your, that's, that's your homework assignment for the week. One time during the week, just one time during the week, tell either Bob or Lonnie one thing you're grateful for. Freak them out. Because all they're used to hearing is what? What's wrong with the place, usually? Because they got to deal with all the problems. But I just want to freak them out a little bit, okay? No, just once during the week. If everybody did it, that'd be like 25 people that were hiring people in the house, you know? That'd be enough for the week. <laughs> I don't know if I get 25 compliments a week, you know? So it'd be like, just, just one great thing that you're grateful for, you know? Shift the attitude and the direction of the house, so. Okay, humor is, you know, that's a great defense too. It's a way of backing people off, okay? Um, so, um, it's kind of like, um, 
telling jokes, you know, being the funny one, being, the, you know, if you have a really fast wit and you're funny and all that kind of stuff, you know, the, uh, do you remember like on, I'm dating myself now, but they just had the Dean Martin roast on TV. And you remember Foster Brooks? <laughs> he was that drunk on there, right? You know, ah, like that. And he always used humor and all that kind of stuff. And people kind of like, you know, joked along with him because he used his humor as a way of, you know, getting over, the, you know, doing it. It was a different time back then too. But that's a, that's a great defense. If you got, if you got a funny humor and, get, and a quick wit, you can back people off at that as well. Okay. Um, uh, it can also be, um, humor can also be like uh, sarcasm because that can be wit as well, right? It's backing people off with a quick wit, but it can be in a negative way as well. Like, you know, the famous example is that um, someone went up to, Winston Churchill was a notorious drinker, right? Big, and he would get drunk at parties and he would just be like obnoxious. And this woman went up to him one time and said, Prime Minister, you are the most obnoxious drunk when you are drinking, oh my God, you know? And he said, dear lady, that may be true. But in the morning when I wake up, I will be sober and you will still be ugly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? So, you know what I mean? Boom, backed her right off. Yeah, touche, all right? And, you know, so sarcasm was a great way of putting people down, you know? And it kind of goes into raging as well, the next one. You know, my dad was a rageaholic along with being an alcoholic. He was a violent, scary man. You know, some therapy once, and, you know, my therapist said, um, hey, how did you know when a conflict was over at your house? And I said, whoever was standing and bleeding the least. And she said, you're not laughing. And I said, no. That's the way it was. You know? And uh, so she's like, wow. So for you, conflict means rage and violence. And I go, yeah. And, you know, my dad only had to really beat us a few times pretty badly and my mom to, like, keep us in line. Then he just had to give us the look, right? We never had, he never had to hit us out in public because we knew he would do it. He did it one time. And then it was worse when we got home. So all he had to do was give us the look. We'd be acting out. We'd be doing it like kids do, right? And he would go, he just give you that look, and I was like, oh, you know, like abusive men only have to beat their partners one time badly enough, and then after that they know. They look at them and you can shut somebody down with rage. Rage is a, you know, powerful emotion. People get addicted to rage. I mean, rage and violence and ugh, like that, it feels much more powerful than sitting there saying, you know, when you do things like that, it really hurts my heart. And I need you not to talk to me that way, you know, that way, whatever. It's more like you said, ugh, right? You know, there's more power and control with that, a feeling, that illusion of that anyway, okay? And that really works for some people really well, okay? Um, I'm the other one. The, one. the other one here is passive aggressive. That's not showing them. That's not, you know, that's like, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's telling people exactly, yeah, I'll do what you say, mm -hmm. yeah, whatever, and I'm going to get you later. And then you find ways to get back at them, or you find ways to, like, uh, I call this I'll show you drinking. And it got me, like, on probation, back on probation twice. Oh, yeah, you got, yeah. Because it was so mad because I didn't get off probation the two times, like, in the time that they said I was going to get off. They, you know how they can extend it sometimes? Okay. They extended mine two weeks. The first time, then the second time, they said, no, you had this thing going on, we're going to extend you, for, we want to keep you on for four more weeks. And both times I got into that, I'll show you. I'll show you, you know, like I showed myself right back to another year on probation both times. You know, that was my disease talking to me because I had no other way of like, Stress relief, problem solving. I didn't know what to do with it. I had no other tricks in my bag at that point. That's all I had was like, I didn't know what else to do.